Welcome to the Work Joy Jam podcast. In this episode, I had a great chat with Jodie Goldman, the impact specialist, and we talked about her four step formula for facing forward, for putting yourself out there, and for having the impact that you want to have, and how that can really bring joy into your life. I love the four steps, they're really simple, um, and I love anything simple for my small brain. Never hiding, showing up, owning your space, and the fourth one, probably my favourite one, which is about be more dog. So I hope you enjoy the episode. It was a really fun conversation to have, and there's some really, really great advice within there around how to build your confidence, how to consider what you need and how important it is to know that and to have great boundaries around that and to think about how humans as how we connect with each other and how we can understand that better and use it to help us in our lives and in our working lives i hope you enjoy this episode Hello and welcome to the Work Joy Jam. In this episode, we're going to be talking to the fabulous Jodie Goldman. Um, Jodie is amazing. She's a great friend and colleague. And I'm now going to hand over to her and let her introduce herself. Jodie, introduce yourself and tell us a bit about who you are and your backstory. Where have you come from? Hi, thanks so much for having me on your amazing podcast. So I am Jodi. I'm a personal impact specialist. My background is communication science, marketing. I come from South Africa originally, moved to the UK, had to start from scratch because none of my qualifications counted, none of my work experience counted. Uh, so I had to start from scratch. I landed up training and delivering leadership programs for an award-winning training company and using my communication science and psychometric profiling. And I did that for several years. I met an image consultant at some point during that time and started to incorporate a lot of the image work and the way that we show up to our lives within the leadership training. But ultimately, I landed up becoming completely obsessed with why some people were able to show up and make an impact on other people and we're able to magnetize people and opportunities to them, even if they were an introvert, even if they had fear or imposter syndrome, even if they weren't always sure about what they were doing, they were still able to really draw people in to make an impact, to show up as the best version of themselves. I landed up interviewing and studying and researching and stalking hundreds of leaders of all different levels to figure out what it was that made them so impactful. And this was about um, 10 years ago now when I then started my own business and started to uh, teach and train and coach around how we can be the most impactful version of ourselves. Amazing. And I think it's really interesting. Uh, one of the things you said there about this idea that even if people have imposter syndrome, which I think mm -hmm. most people do, including myself, and I think you probably say including yourself, not to put words in your mouth as well. But even if you are scared, even if you don't know, really feel what you're doing, even if you're not sure, there are still people who can present themselves in a way that you just want to spend time with them, you want to be with them, you want to listen to them, right? Yeah, exactly. And what I found in my research, and exactly as you said, for yourself and for myself, from my own personal experience, from the um, hundreds of people that I've coached, from all the people that I studied, everyone has imposter syndrome. And I think that's one of the key things uh, to remember is that we often feel like we're alone in our thoughts because we see our own you know, we feel our feelings and we see our own blooper reels, you know, and we just see this kind of polished version of everyone else, but everyone is feeling it. It is how you show up. It's how you, it's what you do despite those feelings that enables you to still be able to make a massive impact on the people around you and on creating the life that you desire. And in your research, Jodie, what did you find were the things that people always did or were there like specific things that came up as themes for those people who are really out there showing up being that magnetic type of character that people want to listen to and want to be led by what were the things that really stood out for you well there were actually four main themes so I call it face forward my face forward formula so there were four strong themes that came out so the first one is 
I call to never hide. And that speaks to what we were just chatting about, where this is about the mindset. It's about feeling the fear, doing it anyway. Um, it's about putting yourself in situations that are outside of your comfort zone. It's all of the inner work that these people do to enable them to just show up despite what's going on inside and not hiding, not hiding from who they are, not hiding from their desires, not hiding from opportunities, not hiding from situations, not hiding within their comfort zones. So I call all of that type of stuff, I just kind of grouped it under the heading like never hide um, was one of the main things that you can do in order to make an impact. The second thing was around showing up and actually showing up to everything that you do, like you are supposed to be there, like you're invited. Um, you know, I, I, I remember so often people, you know, in companies, which this doesn't happen now, clearly, because we all work from home, but where people were going in and I had so many times people say something like, you know, when we have these meetings, sometimes there's not enough seats and I have to stand at the back. And, I'm, and I would just say, why are you standing at the back of the room? You go early and you get a seat at the table, you show up and you show up like you're supposed to be there you show up like the person who you want to be you show up how you want to feel not how you actually are feeling um and this includes what you wear how you present yourself you know your energy so really showing up was the second um thing that theme that came up and the second step in the face forward formula the third thing was around owning your space and around communicating with confidence holding your body with confidence um speaking like a leader so it's owning your space not shrinking not giving away space not making yourself weaker not using words that aren't assertive not using words that aren't uh confident uh, and speak so speaking and holding yourself like a leader so owning that space owning every inch that's yours and the fourth step which is probably really speaks to work joy actually um i call it be more dog and this was all around how we connect to other people around us and our emotional intelligence and how we manage our emotions and how we relate to other people in order to have that massive impact and the people that i studied are able to what i call be more dog and um you know i can i can speak more to that but that was the fourth the fourth category is being able to really engage and connect to people around you by managing your own emotions and by understanding the foundation of connection and what people actually want in terms of connection great and I, I love anything that comes in four steps because my brain my little brain can remember four things in one go yes. um, I'm going to go back and have a think about this never hide um factor and mm -hmm. it's obviously great advice you know to to not to feel the fear to do it anyway I wonder how do you advise people on how to resist the temptation to hide because especially now when lots of people are working from home when it's kind of zoom meetings or microsoft teams meetings or whichever version of technology or blue jeans you use there is always an option to hide because you can go on mute you can mm -hmm. um put your video off you can you can, you can hide and I, I wonder if physically hiding digitally hiding is mm. actually the same sort of thing and what what would you advise people to do who feel that temptation so a great question I think that the first thing is to first of all decide what you actually want you know like what I think something that a lot of people do and what face forward really is about and what I and actually if I were to summarize what really makes people who make an impact stand out like in one sentence the four steps is how you do it but if you really were to look at okay what makes these people who are able to make this massive impact and magnetize people and opportunities to them is that they are very conscious about what they are doing and how they are being and how they're showing up so there's a conscious element to the way that they are living right so a lot of people i find are on autopilot and we are just kind of operating like robots based on our primal fears and our habits and our old stories and you know and all of this kind of thing and so in order to never hide you first of all have to become very conscious about what do you actually want your life to look like what are you actually trying to achieve what do you want to be known for what do you want people to say about you and then having that as that reminder that just that if this is what you want, if this is what success looks like to you, you can't hide. So first of all, I think it's getting really clear about what it is that you want. And then number two is getting super conscious about how you hide, where you hide, uh, you know, and all of that kind of thing. Yeah. 
And so you actually are conscious about it. You kind of go, wait a minute, I don't speak up as much. There's very many times I put myself on mute and I roll my eyes and I don't actually contribute. Or, you know, there are many opportunities that I could have put on my camera. And, I, you know, some people had their cameras on and some people had them off and I always have mine off. And actually just get really honest about how you're hiding. And then it's about making that decision that you're not going to. And then the fear will come up and you'll go, all right, I'm going to put my camera on. I always have it off. And then you'll go, oh, nah, I'll do it tomorrow. You know, I don't really feel like it today. Um, and you have to override that and do it anyway. This is when, you know, Mel Robbins, the five, you know, the five second rule, five, four, three, two, one camera, you know, and you have to just push through and do it no matter what. Um, but it starts with making that decision. I am going to show up on this call today. I am going to contribute at least one time. I am going to use my, my camera. I am going to make sure I ask at least one question. I am going to say if I don't agree, uh, you know, make that decision. And then when you have that urge, because you always will, when you've made a decision about how you want to show up or what you know you need to do or what you want to achieve, your brain will find opportunities for you to do that. It wants to help you. It's just we override those little nudges. And so I think the, the key thing is to listen to the nudges. As soon as you have that tiny, tiny little voice that goes, I should say something right now. That's when you have to speak, no matter yeah. how scared you are and listen to those little nudges. And it starts with becoming really conscious about what it is that you want, noticing how you do it, and then noticing those nudges and acting on them, no matter how you feel about them. And I suppose with all of those things, like, you know, all those little bits of advice, like turn the camera on, just do it. Mm. Um, just say something if you feel it. You don't have to do it all at once, do you? So you could start one week with just having your camera on. Exactly. And then the next week you could start by having a comment or answering a question or, you know, giving a question in a meeting. Mm -hmm. or so, that, so there are little things that you can do to build up. And I think it's probably, I and mean, tell me if I'm wrong here, one of those things that the fear may never go away, but the more you do it, the easier it becomes. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's one of those things where so many times people think, oh, when I feel more confident, then I'll say it, I'll, then I'll do it. But the thing is, you, that's not how confidence works, right? Confidence works through to, through doing, you know, you always, you have to get in the water to learn to swim. You can't stand on the sideline and go, when I'm more confident, then I'm going to swim. No, <laughs> you're only going to swim when you get in the water and you will feel nervous and it will look messy and it will feel uncomfortable and all of those things. And eventually certain things will become easy. So, so eventually you'll be able to get into the pool and you'll be able to swim and you won't even think about it at all. There'll be some things that you'll get a little bit of a tinge of excitement or nerves before you do every single time. Um, but you'll, but you'll get, but you'll become confident through the consistency, really. It's actually like when you do something consistently, you start to get confident. And it's not even just confident in the fact that you can speak up and that you can ask the question and that you can have your camera on and that you can be seen. It's also confidence in yourself that you will do what you say you're going to do, that you told yourself you'd speak up and you did. And that's how we build our confidence as well. Definitely. I always say that confidence is a choice we make and it's every choice we make. We can choose to do the confident thing or not. And in that case, it's the same, isn't it? You choose to put your camera on. That's your choice to be confident to do it. And eventually the confidence you feel will match up to the act of being confident in some way. Yeah, exactly. Tell me more about showing up because I'm really interested. I know obviously we've worked on this kind of the image stuff together. Like what do you wear? How does it make you feel? Mm. Um, and a lot of people will say to me things like, oh, well, it's not about what you wear. It's kind of all the stuff on the inside. And I think I had a bit of a transformation working with you about actually sometimes how I feel on the inside is dictated by what I feel about what I see in the mirror or what I see, how I feel by what I'm wearing and things like that. So tell me a bit more about showing up and um, the image side of things and how you present yourself so this is so important and it's so common a lot of people their kind of gut reaction is like it doesn't matter you know what you wear shouldn't matter um we have this kind of and I think that the trick is because we don't want it to matter that's actually more accurate like I don't want it to matter what I wear but it does and it matters for for two reasons. One is the the if we look at impact and making an impact on the people around us and being seen and from a personal branding point of view and from a um, standing out point of view, it's a very useful tool. Whether we like it or not, it's the way that our brain works. We look at people, we look at anything, and we very very quickly have to filter the world around us. There's so much information, and meeting someone is exactly the same. In fact, even more because we are primal like 
pack animals inside of us, there's still this little caveman, you know, looking out for our survival all the time. And so when we meet someone within seconds, your primal instinct takes over and it's always going to be, do I trust this person? That's the most important thing is, is this person, do I trust this person? And so we're very quickly looking for the information around us to work out how much we trust someone, how much we like someone because our survival depends on it. So when people say it shouldn't matter, it doesn't matter. It does, because if you can figure out how to get rid of the primal instinct inside of our brain, awesome, but it's never going to happen. So we, <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's going to, it's always going to matter. Like w things will change, the, what they mean will change. So for example, you know, it used to be, you know, men being smoothly shaven faces was like appropriate in a workplace. And if someone wasn't smoothly shaven, it would be like, oh, are, are they trustworthy? You know, now that doesn't, now that's not the case. Now beards are actually really fashionable and, you know, so, so, so the, the information that we're getting changes, but are we noticing it? Yes, we are. Is it going to have an impact on us? Yes, it is, whether we like it or not. So I always say, you know, play the game or don't play the game. But if you've got to play the game, then you've got to wear the stripes, right? You've got to just like, mm. you know, you've got to think about what do I want to be known for? What do I want people to think and feel when they meet me? So the clothing element does matter. But the second part of it, which is what you were, were uh, touching on, which is so important, is it absolutely 100% matters to how we feel about ourselves. And research has proven this. There are countless studies, countless studies that prove not just what we wear makes an impact and an impression on the people around us, but what we wear is changing our own. In fact, there's studies that show it changes our intelligence, it changes our confidence, it changes the our um, ability to perform and be effective. So there's so many different studies that have proven this again and again and again. We have such a unique relationship to the way that we dress. Like people, there's a very, it's a very interesting relationship I think people have to the way that they dress, right? Like you could put something on and, and feel like this is so not me. And it's got such a visceral like reaction, right? You can put something on and suddenly feel like, oh my God, I'm a I'm Beyonce. <laughs> you know, like where's my <laughs> wind machine? Um like you you the way what you wear, it like has a visceral change in the way that we hold ourselves. Everyone has had something that they've put on and they've just been like, oh, you know, whether it be someone, you know, maybe a, a guy's had his very first um, tailored suit, you know, made made to measure and he just puts it on and he's like, I literally am James Bond, you know, or maybe you've had your hair done at the hairdresser and it's like bouncy and you see your reflection in some glass and you just have this little like step, you know, little like uh, bounce in your step. Like it does, it totally changes how we dress I and mean, how we feel. So it's important to kind of feel into that relationship and realize it's a two, it's a two prong thing. It's like, it is having an impact on them and it's having an impact on you. And therefore, you know, if you work on it and you, you do some things about it and you feel good in what you're wearing, that, that I feel like if you feel good in what you're wearing or who who you are and you're standing up there and you're being brave, you're having that conversation, you're turning your camera on, all of those different things that fit into your point one and point two of your face mm -hmm. forward formula is people are going to feel that you feel good, right? Yes, exactly. It's all about our energy and that's really what is makes the impact. It's the energy that we have. And so everything is going to be feeding into that energy that you're bringing to that table, virtual table, real table, whatever table, right? Like it's about yeah. that energy that we're bringing to everything that we do that people really respond to. So as much as we can do to like build our energy up and to give us mojo, which is, you know, I call, I, you know, I always go, you know, find your mojo and then protect it like a mofo because that's everything. <laughs> Yeah. And like when we see it in other people, when we see mojo in other people, when we see that energy, when we kind of feel that people feel good about themselves and are able to talk and communicate really well, that is what becomes attractive and magnetic, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And exactly. And yeah, it's exactly right. So it's about, yeah, we see it and we're like, we, you kind of have this feeling of, I want some of that. Um, I want what she's having. I want what he's having. Uh, or who is he? Like, who is that? Or who is she? You know, like we have that feeling when someone has that energy about them. And here's the thing. It's not about being loud. Like, this isn't loud energy. This isn't about being like the loudest person in the room. Because I think a lot of times people who are it more introverted feel like the oh this isn't them but in fact yeah. in my research some of the most impactful people are introverts yeah 
And it's it's not about you're right. It's not about they're just who's the loudest voice. It's about what's the energy behind their voice. What yes. are they bringing to it? Exactly. Talk to me a little bit more about your point three and owning your space. And it's mm. one thing that when I'm seeing people in group sessions or I'm working with people individually, it becomes a really big question for people as to how do they own their space and how do they really communicate in the right way what's some of your tips around this particular element so own your space is around and I so I called it own your space because what I find is so so often people give away space through things like literally making themselves very small by folding their arms and shrinking down like physically giving away space giving away space by not protecting their boundaries and saying saying yes to things they don't want to do, right? You know, so owning your space is around realizing that you are just as worthy and just as deserving and just as enough as anyone else in the world to do and be and have whatever it is that you desire and own every little inch of space that's been given to you in this world to take up. And so physically from a physical point of view it's obviously you know sitting up straight opening your arms um you know not folding your arms not shrinking not not bringing your elbows in so that you make yourself as small as physically possible not crossing your legs when you stand to present because all of these things are actually flat body language and so they're going to communicate to the people around you that you are not in your comfort zone that you're not feeling um as confident and why that's dangerous is as I said at the beginning, the most important thing for us as humans is that we feel trust, that we trust the people that we are with, right? We And what that actually means on a primal level is I trust that I'm, I'm safe when I'm with you. And so if you just think about that again, it comes to that consciousness. What are you consciously trying to communicate with Own Your Space? I'm trying to communicate that I, that you are safe with me, that I have everything under control, that I believe in myself, that I'm able to take care of myself. Because if I can't take care of myself, then I'm a liability to my tribe and my community, right? As a primal caveman. Like if I am the person who's going to be falling down that you're going to have to pick up, then I'm making it unsafe for everyone. So we want to communicate that you are sa a safe pair of hands. And that is owning your space so holding yourself like you know what's going on like you're feeling fine like everything's under control and this isn't about lying this is about acting as if so that you can start to feel it because exactly the same as showing up where what you wear changes how people see you but it also changes how you feel owning your space is exactly the same so it not only communicates to people outside of you that you are confident, that you have everything under control, therefore they can trust you, but it actually communicates to yourself the same thing. So when you shrink, you actually send signals to your own brain that you are not 100% comfortable. So your brain will be on high alert for danger. And so you can actually make yourself feel more confident by making your body language more confident, by holding yourself in a way that's more confident. And that goes the same with the words that we use. The words that we use can, can communicate to the people around us that we have everything under control, but it will also communicate to yourself. So, for example, saying, you know, oh, I'll try and do that. That's not going to communicate to that person that you have everything under control. That doesn't say to me, you will. That to me says you won't. You know, if someone says, I'm going to try come to your party the weekend, we all know the person. Like, you know, coming. they're not coming, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when we hear try, we don't hear like confidence. We just hear, no, they don't, they're not going to do it. They're not going to be able to do it. So you're not going to give anyone confidence with that language. But when you use the word try, you're also saying that to yourself. You're saying, I'm going to try and do this. So for example, I'm going to try and go to the gym more next weekend. You're not going to do it because you've already told yourself that you won't. And so we have to be careful about how we hold ourselves, the body language we use, the words that we use, because it's communicating to others and it's communicating to ourselves. Yeah, so interesting, isn't it? We often think about how do I communicate with others, but not the impact of what we say or how we hold ourselves on ourselves. Yeah. And I wonder if we need to maybe think about how do we consider ourselves as one of the audiences that we're or one of the people that we're actually communicating with and what are the messages we're saying? I mean, I always think that try is like the ultimate get out clause, isn't it? As yes. If I say I try, if I don't succeed, it doesn't matter because I only said I try. Exactly. Yeah, you never said you said would. Committing it is. to doing it. I never actually exactly. said I would. It was fine. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, and we do it to ourselves all the time. So it's like, if you say, if the minute someone says they're going to try to do something, it's just, just, it's, they don't, it's not going to happen. 
you know? So that's why we have to be careful how we speak to ourselves. Yeah. And the messages that we give ourselves by our body language and our physicality Mm. and our, on our voice and I hear it a lot and you, you probably hear it a lot too where people say oh I just did this I mm-hmm. only I was only I was part of the team and not really owning our own success as well yes. as things like you know trying oh or gosh. not trying yeah absolutely so in own your space own your successes own your desires own your needs own your wants you know I talk a lot about in own your space like the understanding actually what it means to be assertive and what it means to it's really about being assertive you know and and what that actually means is being is being clear and honest and confident in your needs, desires, and wants, and understanding that other people will have their own needs, desires, and wants. And then it's how you negotiate that, how you communicate about that, how you resolve that, how you communicate in like intellect, uh, um, intelligently and with good emotional intelligence. And, but you have to, you have to own your stuff first, you know, it's like lead yourself and then you can lead others. And it's not like a magic wand that suddenly is just going to come and do it for you. It is think you have to do it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Number four, be more dog. Obviously, yes. I love this. I'm a massive dog fan, as you know, yeah. and I know you are too. Yeah. And I have just come back from a dog walk. So I'm feeling feeling quite dog at the moment. And I also Amazing. think dogs are the best things that were ever invented. So yes. tell me a little bit more about the be more dog section, because it makes me all excited. Okay. <laughs> so this is often a favorite. So the be more dog so the reason first of all why i called it be more dog is when i was doing all the research and i was looking at okay why are some people so impactful and you know and i was doing the interviews and i was asking people okay and i was i when i did inter- interviews and research and sp- have spoken to hundreds and hundreds of people now i was asking people on both sides of the table so i was asking people who were identified as being very impactful like people said oh this person has so much impact they're very magnetic i would always listen to them um and i would say okay why what are they doing what are you responding to and then i would speak to people who were impactful and i'd say okay what are you doing what are your thought processes what are you conscious about so this is how face forward came to be and in those interviews you know certain things were like super clear so for example the never hide you know it was this a lot about getting out of their comfort zone and doing brave things and and so on and so forth and showing up and the relationship that they had with their clothes and what we were noticing about signature styles and so on and owning their space about the confidence and you know the word confident came up in every single interview basically whereas with with be more dog there was this something else that people kept referring to but it was the same thing i didn't want a million steps because it was they were all kind of sort of talking about the same thing but in a a kind of different ways and I was thinking like how do I describe this because it's more than just being warm so this word warm or approachable would come up and there was a bit more to it than that and um anyway so I, I had all of this in my head and I actually took my dog for a walk and I was in the park and I was watching the dogs play and I just suddenly had this moment I was like that's it it's just like that's it this is what they are doing and this is what we are responding to is be more dog. And so essentially it's like a philosophy. So be more dog means a few things, right? So first of all, it's like remembering that number one, as human beings, we're still pack animals. We're absolutely a hundred percent pack animals. I like to say we're pack animals who are very self-conscious. You know, dogs are like <laughs> have zero, they're not self-conscious at all, right? We're yeah. pack animals, but we're so self-conscious about it, about what we need and what we feel and ourselves and all of those things right um but if you take all of that away fundamentally humans want to connect we we really want to connect we need to connect we need to be a part of a community we need to be a part of a tribe we need to be you know for our own safety we want relationships we want to be loved we want to be liked that everyone does that's a basic human need for every single person so 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 with that in mind when you take when you look at dogs here's the philosophy so number one you know, when you leave the house for five minutes or five hours, you know, you come home and the dog is so excited to see you. And so it's this idea of making people feel important, like letting people know that you are happy to see them, that you're excited to see them. This isn't about jumping all over them and licking their faces. No one likes that. <laughs> but it's about, you know, sometimes you notice people are so don't want, are so kind of, worried about letting others know that they matter if that makes sense you know like when people kind of hold back like you know so it's about for example when you go into the office when we would when we were working in an office right how many times did you walk in and you'd be like morning 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 kind of waving at people without actually looking at them in the eyes 
without actually stopping, looking at this human being standing in front of you and going, good morning, how are you? Like, and actually meaning it. And so yeah. we want to just, so, so, so be more dark is about actually looking at this person and letting them know, how are you? Oh my God. It's so good to see you. Not, you know, you, yeah, this I, human, as an individual, in you, yeah, you, yeah. it's so good to see you. And so total a- sideline, but I used to work um, in an organization with open plan offices and one team um, who were amazing at doing that be more dog thing. Mm-hmm. Every time when one, someone came into work, they clapped them in. So they clapped them into their desk, oh, like amazing. welcome, clap them in. <laughs> and it's like, what a great way to start the day. You get a round of applause on your way into work. I love that. I love that. And yeah. you see, there's like little things that people can do like that that can bring joy. It's just we, when we turn into robots, we stop doing stuff like that. You know, we stop yeah. really thinking about the impact that we're having on the people around us and we become mood hoovers. You know, it's like be more dog. You know, dogs aren't like, oh, it's another day. You know, dogs are like, <laughs> oh, what are we going to do today? <laughs> you know, and again, I'd like to reiterate because a lot of people are not like extroverted, are not like, you know, this isn't about bouncing off the walls. It's just about bringing that genuine warmth when you just look at someone in their eyes like real eye contact like really looking at them and remembering this is an actual person right so be more dog show people that you're really interested make people feel important make people feel important and seen the second thing was and this is really huge is when you go to a dog park and i'm talking i'd like to just clarify like i'm talking about a healthy balanced dog like healthy balanced dogs that are the way they're supposed to be not ones that are messed up by people because people mess dogs up so without insecurities so a normal healthy balanced dog when you take them to the dog park they will run up to other dogs and be so excited and they will run in expecting the best right like dogs don't go to a dog walk and go, oh, I wonder if that dog's gonna like me. Oh, I wonder if I'm gonna <laughs> if I'm gonna run up to them and smell their butt. Maybe they won't smell my butt and it'll be so embarrassing. Like, no. <laughs> like they just assume I'm gonna run up, I'm gonna like sniff your butt, you're gonna sniff my butt, everything's gonna be great. Like, why wouldn't you? Because that's normal dog behavior. And so yeah. we somehow lost that with our insecurities and our self-consciousness, where we now you see a lot of people stand at the back kind of going, Mm, let me just suss this out like will they like me you know you see it a lot at like networking events and parties like will they like me and you know oh I don't know like it's human nature to connect and if you go in and you just assume the best like dogs you know a dog will run up to a person who it doesn't know drop a ball at its feet and go like throw it you know they don't ever <laughs> They just assume, like they assume you're going to pick up the ball. You're going to throw it for me. Like, why wouldn't you? And then the second part of this, which is why I love this analogy so much, is if the person is like, oh, I don't want to throw that ball for this dog. A dog isn't like, oh, I'm a bad dog. No one loves me. Everyone hates me. Like, there's something wrong with me. It just is like, oh, okay. And it'll take the ball to someone else. You know, it's not a, yeah, it's not a thing. It just assumes someone's going to throw the ball. And if it's not this person, then, you know, I mean, what kind of person doesn't like dogs? Hmm. so <laughs> so um you know so it's like not taking those things personally which 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 is which is the, the next part of being more dog as well because sometimes a dog will run up to another dog and the dog will blank it like that will be molly sometimes my, my dog will sometimes completely blank other dogs if she is obsessed with if she has a squirrel in her eye line she will not even blink and so a dog will be like <laughs> bouncing all around her and she's literally just staring at the tree right which is not actually normal dog behavior it's obsessive behavior so it's so this dog who's sniffing molly doesn't walk away going there's something wrong with me they just are like oh that's a weirdo squirrel obsessed dog like that's got nothing to do with me so the other part of be more dog is not taking things personally Mm. you know sometimes a dog will run up to another dog and that dog will attack them it'll growl it'll bark you know it'll just snap at them for no reason and a really healthy dog a really balanced healthy dog will not shrink will not just roll over on its back it will actually puff up and own its space it'll say don't speak to me like that and then it will turn and walk away really quickly it doesn't engage in the fight it just kind of it 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 kind of puffs itself up it's like no and then it turns and it just leaves the situation and then it runs to the next dog just as happy as it was before because it doesn't take that personally because it knows that that's not a good dog that's not a healthy dog that is a dog that's had something happen to it right it's like a 
rescue dog. It wasn't socialized. Its owners make it feel very insecure. And like, you know, it's just, it's not, doesn't have a healthy environment where it feels safe. Like it's been abused, like whatever it might be, like that's why a dog acts like that. So a good, normal, healthy dog will just kind of take that behavior and just leave the situation and won't take it personally. Yeah. So, and they don't take the baggage with them. So they don't exactly. assume that for everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. They then, they, they just, they, they just drop it and they run to the next situation just as happy as they were before. They don't run in like, Oh, someone was just really like barked at me and it was like really like so rude. And now I'm going to just like be pissed off for the rest of the day and really upset for the rest of the day because why did they speak to me like that? And I can't believe they spoke to me like that. And they're so rude. Why they're so rude because they're not a good dog <laughs> and they've got their own baggage, you know? And this is what I always say. So one of the key things with be more dog is remembering. And I think that this is really, really helpful particularly for you know for for uh work joy right is that happy healthy confident people are not rude to other people it's as yeah. simple as that a happy healthy confident person is not rude aggressive or mean to other people so if someone is being rude aggressive mean they are not happy they're not healthy or they are not confident or all of those things. So one or all. And that's, and if you see it in yourself too, that's when we aren't our best version of ourselves. If you're not happy, you snap, you, 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 you cranky, you're like grumpy. You know, if you are not healthy, you don't feel well. That's when we kind of also get a bit snappy or a bit rude or a bit like impatient and you don't feel good. If you're not confident in a situation, you can lash out, you can feel insecure, you can feel a bit, you can come across as aloof, you can come across as like rude when you don't mean to, you know, you can feel like people are trying to get one over on you, you can be defensive. So this is when we behave that way. And so be more dog is remembering that it's make people feel important. It's connect to the people around you. It's bring the energy that you want to feel like bring the energy, you know, bring the energy that you want to feel. Don't rely on the external circumstances to get energy. Definitely. And then don't take things personally. And that's hard, right? Because we do take things personally, don't we? We feel rejection very badly as humans, I think. Yeah. Well, exactly, because it goes back to that primal fear of like feeling, oh my God, if you're rejected, then your safety, you, it's almost like you will die, you know, not consciously, you never con don't consciously think that, but at an unconscious level, the, the little caveman inside of us, if you get kicked out of the community, you're on your own and you could die. You know, you could be attacked by an animal, you could, yeah. you have to fend for yourself. And so we have this very deep need to belong. And that's why people are so afraid of rejection because it almost feels like your life is in danger kind of thing. So it, it, on, on a very unconscious, like deep within us level. But yeah. if you go into it with be more dog energy and you go in with, you can only be responsible for how you show up and yeah. that it, that everyone wants to connect and that you get to bring the energy that you want to feel, you know, like a dog It's just as another dimension. When there's a dog in the room, everyone can feel it even if it's quiet and sleeping on, you know, like people are like really <laughs> aware, like a dog, like walks a quiet, calm dog can walk into a room and, it, and there's just, a, you just feel it. You're like, Oh my God, there's a dog, you know, like they just have a, so it's not, it's like bring the energy. Love it. And I totally feel the, the, the be more dog and really, really for me does relate to the idea of work joy and how yeah. you have to own it and be the person. You can't just wait for somebody to come and fix it all for you. Mm -hmm. You might be in a situation where you're, your boss isn't that happy, healthy, confident person and who is mm -hmm. being rude or mean or just not really connecting with you. Yeah. You might have some teammates that are like that, but mm -hmm. it's not necessarily your fault. <laughs> there exactly. might be, you know, many other reasons why people are in that. They're not feeling good. They're not feeling happy. They're not feeling confident, but you can choose to not respond to that by being an unhappy, unhealthy, unconfident person. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And it's about how you respond. You can only be responsible for your, for the choices that you make, as you said earlier, the choices that we make, we make choices all the time. So in every situation, I can choose to say yes, I can choose to say no, I can choose to have a conversation about this, I can choose to let this go, I can choose to be annoyed, I can choose to forgive, I can choose to, you know, it's like, we have to just be aware. And also, I can choose to remember that this isn't about me. And that as long as I am cleaning up my side of the street, other people are responsible for their side of the street so you know you want to just be careful about what you're taking on and what you're bringing to the table 
Yeah. And also there's something here about we're all going to have days where we don't feel very yes. happy. We're all yes, going to have days where we don't feel um, particularly healthy or we don't feel particularly confident. Mm-hmm. And to maybe just be a little bit kind to ourselves that we can accept those days as long as the proportion of them, we're managing mm-hmm. to find some happiness and some healthiness and some um, you know, and some confidence from within and, and kind of taking the actions that we need to take to yeah. do that stuff where we convince our brain that this is actually okay and this is actually yeah. who we are and it is okay mm-hmm. to stand up and take that space and it is okay yeah. to show up and turn my video on and it is okay for me to ask a question or to be interested mm-hmm. it's okay for me to go and approach somebody and if they don't engage that's up to them mm-hmm. that's not exactly. up to me I can just yeah. do the best I can yeah no matter what happens I'll be okay right exactly yeah yeah love that so I have got some quick fire questions for you are you ready I am ready first one um what is always guaranteed to bring you some work joy working with people who get it like get working with people who want to be the best version of themselves, who want to do the work, who do the work, who get the results, who are showing up and making an impact. Um, It is guaranteed to bring me joy when I hear from someone that they have got the job that they really wanted, that they've got the raise, that they've got the promotion, that they've got new clients, that they've, you know, that they're just doing it, that they're not hiding from their own desires and that they are, um, you know, making those choices, as we spoke about, to actually create the life that they really, truly desire and stepping into their own power and being really impactful. Uh, that brings me joy every time. Yeah, really great example there. And one thing I just picked out and I like made a big like highlight on my notepad with it is they do the work because this isn't yes. something that's just going to be magically handed to you. No, You have to do the work exactly and that work sometimes can be fun because it's sometimes like the exploration side and it's interesting and you're learning and you're growing but also learning and growing can feel really awkward at times right exactly it can feel like so messy that's the thing when you're in the middle of a transformation it's very uncomfortable and messy it's always just like yeah just, you know when you like tidy your house and you've done this and you take everything <laughs> out of the cupboards and then you just look around and you're like oh holy shit what have I done and it's so messy and you're like why did I do this like why did I even think and you're just surrounded by like mess and the only <laughs> thing that you can do is just slowly start putting it away like thing at a time and being and and it's hard but then when it's done it's like oh my god and you have this like amazing clean house and it feels awesome um it's like that so so doing the work on ourselves and it's an always an ongoing process, right? It's always like the, every, every level, there's a new devil. So it's always like, okay, now I need to, okay, where, where am I hiding from my insecurities? What stories are, and you have to do it again. Like, where can I up level? What, what do I need to change? Why am I feeling this way? And it's just kind of like a constant process and it's always just like messy during the middle, but it's always worth it in the end. Yeah. And I totally get the tidying metaphor because when (laughs) I do tidy the house, like everything comes out and then it's Mm -hmm. an absolute nightmare. And I wish I hadn't Mm -hmm. started. But once you finish it, you feel amazing. So it's definitely worth it. But I also that point about actually this isn't like you do it once and you're done because you're always growing and resetting and there'll be new goals and new things that are challenging and different people and a different version of you. Because I think we just reinvent ourselves constantly, don't we? So we're always going to have to work on these things. Yeah, exactly. I think that's another thing. Okay, question two. Yeah. Carry on. No, I was just going to say, no, that's exactly right. I think people often, where that imposter syndrome comes up or where people suddenly think, oh, it's because they suddenly have, they they kind of overcome something and then suddenly they feel insecure about something or they have doubt again. And then they, then it's kind of, then they've got doubt about the fact that they've got doubt, if that makes sense. So you start to compound (laughs) these feelings, whereas no, 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 just know that it will always come up. There's or we always are doing the work. It's an ongoing process. Yeah, great. Um, question two, yes. what book are you currently reading? I am currently reading Untamed by Glenn and Doyle. I love it. Have you read it? I've read it like three times. Have you? Oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. So um, yeah, it's just, I, I can tell I'm going to read it a million times. I actually have it on audio. I listen to the audio. I love audio books because I listen to Me them too. sometimes when I go on a walk. And I'm just loving it. It is just the most beautiful book. 
Yeah, I love it. I've, I think I've read it three times and listened to it twice. Amazing. Um, and it's just, and I've sent it, I've literally bought the book and sent it to a load of friends as well, because I think you need to read this. So yeah. brilliant one. Definitely recommend it to all of our listeners. Yes. Um, question three. Um, what is the best or most useful piece of advice that you've had that you always come back to? um so many things are in my head right now I suppose the kind of basic feel the fear and do it anyway is the one that I come back to again and again and again and Mm. again and again is feel the fear and do it anyway because and yeah and at the end of fear is always a thing you actually really want isn't it you have to go through the fear to get what you want yeah exactly um final question from me uh, what is one really super practical bit of advice that you could give to our listeners that is something that they could go and do today, tomorrow, the next day, that's really simple and will help them to get more work joy? Face forward, follow the face forward formula, the four steps. <laughs> um, but if I were to just give us an actual practical thing, I would actually say show up, like get dressed, like just get dressed up, especially right now, you know, when we, we're working from home so much more, which I don't think will change that much ever now I think a lot of people will be working from home a lot more than what they did before so just still show up get dressed put makeup on you know shave like just just really show up to that day because it will change how you feel and it will change how you act and hold yourself and 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 all of the things and so it's so practical it's such such a thing that we can do to give ourselves that mojo and that boost and that kind of change of mindset and you know turning ourselves on and all of that kind of stuff. So I would say just get dressed. Get dressed. It's a good yeah. bit of advice. <laughs> okay. So Jodie, huge thank you for coming on to the Work Joy Jam podcast today. It's been great to chat to you as always. Um, where can our listeners find out more about you, about Face Forward, about what you do and your work? So my website is Jody Goldman, J-O-D-I Goldman.co.uk. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn. You can find me, Jodie Goldman. Uh, And I have a free Facebook group as well called She Steps Up, which anyone is welcome to come and join, where I do some live videos and share posts and inspiration and things like that. So those would be the three places I would say would be best. Website, LinkedIn, and She Steps Up on Facebook brilliant and we will share those in the information about the podcast as well so you can hopefully click on a nice easy link jody huge thank you for coming along today for sharing your amazing face forward for steps to hopefully having some more work joy and feeling good about yourself and being able to do all the things that you really want to do it's been fantastic having you thank you very much thanks so much Thanks for listening to this episode with Jodie Goldman. I think the one thing that I'm really taking away is the statement around happy, healthy or confident people are not rude, aggressive or mean to other people. And for us to all remember that if someone is being rude, aggressive or mean, they're either not happy, not healthy or not confident or all three or a combination of those all. And that perhaps we should learn to not take those things personally and do that be more dog bit and step away, move on and not take that as baggage or a sign of rejection. Thanks very much for listening today. I really hope you enjoyed it. You can follow us on Instagram at create work joy our website is createworkjoy.com we'd love to hear from you um if you want to send us an email it's hello at createworkjoy.com or tag yourself in the instagram show us what you're doing with the actions that you're taking from listening to the advice from our range of experts thanks for listening uh, and enjoy your day 